All right. So uh, Catwoman, issue 26, Ram V writing, Fernando Blanco on the art. This, of course, is the first, well, not the first full issue, because he, he technically wrote first, the first full story, but... First regular issue. Yes, first regular issue of this new run on Catwoman. And I have to say, I'm very impressed uh, so far with this first issue. As a crime book, which is setting up a new status quo, a new location, a potential villain, and various other factors, uh, including, like, you know, you've got the uh, the cop who was from earlier in the run that, you know, popped in, in issue 25, who's still sticking around. Um, various features, the idea that Penguin here at the start has hired a hitman to come after Catwoman because of what she did in 25. Uh, all really solid stuff that feels like even after just this one issue, and okay, technically it's the second issue of the run, but in terms of like, okay, that, that first issue, because when we talk about issue 25, it was really just that one backup that set up this new status quo of her moving to this, you know, uh, alley town. Here though, in one issue of the, of the, the, the regular part of the run, it's already established so many moving parts that by the end of the issue, I, I felt so slickly like settled into a groove where there, there, there's multiple things going on in this alley town you've got Catwoman, you've got her kids you've got this assassin you've got the cop which is tying in to the fact that he hears about this assassin coming to town but not knowing why he's there and then you've got the different mob bosses going on yeah, their the relationships yeah different mob bosses and how Catwoman's going to try and take them both down um and, you know, it's like, okay, she's been a bit more of a criminal, but she's intentionally going out of her way to take down the meth, like, empire, because she doesn't want meth on the streets. You know, there's there's some, you know, heart of gold uh, qualities there's, in there. There's, there's things, she'll allow some crime, you know, some thievery. Yes. Um, but, you know, hard drugs to the kids, that's a big no-no. Uh, question, though, when, when Penguin called this hitman Mr. Valley, were you starting, were you trying to think about how he connected to Jean-Paul? No, because I just read it as Valley. Even though I agree there is the extra E in there. Yeah. Kind of just read it as, as Valley. I, I was trying, I was like, how does this get to Asriel? And it doesn't. <laughs> but um, I, I was trying to, like, wait, is, did Asriel, like, really change his look? What's going on here? <laughs> this is yeah. really different. Uh, do you know what I will say about this issue? I have very little to fault about this issue, and that's not to say I'm going to give it, like, a flawless score at the end. Because I don't think it goes, like, above and beyond and wows me either. It does everything that it needs to do to an extremely high level of quality is like, it, you know, it, it establishes all these moving parts. It, it eases me in, but it does feel like the start of a story as well. It's not like immediately out the gate, like bang, this is something phenomenal, but it's such finely crafted. It feels like a really well-crafted comic book from the type of serialized comics that I feel like maybe he's been lacking a little bit. Like everything these days typically has to go with a bigger cliffhanger or with a bigger, a moment. I don't know. There was something about the the ending where it was just like so. The book ends the issue for a start because the opening scene is this hitman being hired. Is this this uh, Mister Valley being hired? And then Father the Valley. Father Valley, sorry. And at the end of the the issue, the final beat is that we've been just been, we've been having all the gang stuff play out and Catwoman and all the other things we've been paying attention to, and we've not really been thinking about him too much. All in the fact that the the cop finds out that he's in town and that he should be concerned about that, tying all the plots together a little bit, which is kind of nice. But the the last page it's just the it's just this Father Valley's watching her from across the street with some binoculars, right? It's, he's just sort of you know surveying his prey, and you know he's very eccentric. You know it makes it he makes it clear at the start that it's his choice of how she'll die. He clearly takes a pride in his work and maybe enjoys it. All he likes these things. To put in the Bible. Uh, yeah, he's very religious, as the name Father Valley might uh, imply, and. But there's something so simple about it that it feels like it's just teasing the next chapter of the story where I feel like I got this sufficient chapter that interests me to so many things and left me kind of like tempted. Because it's not, I don't think the end of the issue is like he's going to strike and there's going to be a big fight next issue. It doesn't have that feeling to it. It has this feeling like, no, no, he's there, he's watching. Maybe his first like, you know, because maybe he plays with her a little bit. Maybe he like... He's, he's, uh, he's learning. He's there for information right here now. He's not here to, you know, make his move. Right, no, it, it is. This isn't gonna, you know, open with the next issue of him making the move. It's no, no. He, he's he's learned something here. He's learned about this relationship, and it's like, okay, that's something I can use, but not something that he's going to act on, you know, right this second. That's Catwoman's relationship with her sister, uh, for context. Yes. Um, 
but he, he uh, I don't know, there's just something about the cliffhanger that felt more old school to me in a way that not enough comic books do, I don't think, anymore. Um, mm. And I really appreciated that. There's so many moving parts. Uh, you, you, you've got Catwoman, and it's very stylized. They feel like a crime drama. You know, the, 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 the two-page like layout where it's explaining the two crime bosses. And it's like the, the map of the, the of Alley Town in the background. And um, I thought it was really clever what they did with this, where because there's three characters it's introducing, um, and each one uh, obviously it has their name underneath them on the on the panel itself. But if you look at one of the adjacent panels to each of those characters, it mentions their character in one of the uh, narration boxes as well. Uh, so it's just this, uh, you know, this subliminal, uh, you know, just connecting them to, you know, to the name. Even if you didn't, if you if you happen to glance over the the name on the on the image, you got their name in the text as well. And because by nature of it being next to them, you connect it subliminally. That was a really weird way of <laughs> basically to to say this the the other way around, which I think is the way it's intended, is that you read the narration like you do, um, and when it mentions the context of who these people are. You get, what this essentially gives you the effect of is if you're watching like a movie that's kind of stylized and it like you know when the character mentions like who a certain mob boss is it cuts to a shot of that mob boss with their name coming up in a big fancy font to make well, it very no, clear because why i didn't use that analogy and i think it's very important is because it's not always done in that order sometimes you will see the the character pop up first and then in the next panel it has a narration box that mentions that character's name uh, so it's not always done, the, you know, is that style of cutting away like you, like you kind of felt there. Um, it still reads that way to me, but this is more down to how uh, I read comics. Um, I read the narration boxes first. They are, like, I don't necessarily pay as much attention to it until I've got context. Even on, like, a page like this where it's split up into panels, essentially, with the map, and it kind of leads you across. Oh, so especially on a page like this, because the boxes are going in such a specific order, I read the boxes for context first. Uh, right, the... but um, like the, the 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 point for me here is uh, Pitt Rollins uh, is the third character here introduced, and you have that page, sorry, that page, that panel with her there, and you don't actually get the narration box with that name in until after you've seen that image, uh, assuming you read it in the order that you're supposed to. No, whenever it's a trailing of narration boxes like this, I'm reading the boxes, and then my eyes are jumping to things that are relevant to the boxes as I'm reading it. Uh, that's just how I always read pages like this. Um, so, because to, to me, the order of this, because there's, there's panels in this that are, that are, for lack of a better word, useless. And I, I'm not saying that as a critique. There's panels here that are just parts of the map that mean nothing to us. They're not there. Really are there are some like that, yeah. right? So this isn't a this isn't a page where you read just left to right in the nine panel grid or thereabouts. It's actually kind of, it's like three and a half panels because of the way the map layout, but. You know, you read typically that way in a normal copy because each panel is its own thing with a you know some either some art in a narration box or maybe without just art on its own, whatever. But it's telling a sequential story. Here, it's not quite that. Here, this is more like this is more like uh, it, for the fact that it, the map in the background is in like a grid that's kind of like a comic book layout. It's kind of almost just happenstance to what this actually is. This is a lot more like a fancy layout where. The order is a bit more free flow, and it's a bit more wherever the narration box wants to take you. So, to me, I look at this page, and my first instinct is like, oh, this these narration boxes are snaking around a specific way down the page. They're not panel to panel. And because of that, the way I was reading them was kind of like that. And it's not that I don't notice the, the panels with the art in them. I see them there. But it's the sort of thing where I get to the context, and if I... Well, I will make one small complaint here, is that I do think the text that's on their panels with their names is actually kind of hard to read in two of them. Um, uh, I agree with that. It's a yeah. colouring choice, I think, more yeah. than anything. Pet Rollins is nice and easy because the, the blue car makes it really easy to read the name because the, the text is in red with a yellow uh, background. Uh, the other two panels, especially the, the cop, the dirty cop, his is impossible to read. Like I, I agree. I think there's a weird problem where they, they, they knew there was a... I, well, okay. I think they knew there was a problem with reading these, and that's why they added the white drop shadow to to try and make it more legible. Is that a yellow? Uh, I mean, maybe it is. I'm looking at it just at the size of it. Uh, maybe it is yellow behind it. I, I don't know. Uh, I thought it was white. Um, I'm zooming in. No, it's, it's white behind it. Is it? it looks yellow to me, but... Uh, 
Right, and that's kind of the problem. I think they, they were aware there was a problem with the readability, and that's why they added that. I think it kind of made it worse, on, especially on a Colic. Is that it, Colic? Colic, yeah. Uh, you know what? There's a reason why Black's the one they usually go with. Black would have made it easier. <laughs> no, I agree, yeah. Uh, and, and last thing, I think it works fine on Pit Rollins because it's red against blue, uh, so it stands out. Uh, the other ones have some readability issues. I, I, I definitely agree with you on that. Um, so, no, um, that's kind of, yeah, so uh, whatever, we're debating about the order of things, but I, to, to me, I, re I read the stuff in the narration boxes, and then I, I like that the, the panels of who these people are popped up when it was relevant to them, and they were neatly labeled, so having their names there, even if I couldn't necessarily read them, in fact, to be honest, the, the, the first one, when I got to the, and in fact, do you know what? I think I, when I got over to Pit, I realized that their names were in the boxes because I didn't even notice <laughs> at first glance. Oh, really? <laughs> and I went back and checked, and then when I really tried hard to read the first guy's name, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's just the guy's it's name." It's that one in that panel next to it. Yeah. So, so he's labeled. Uh, um, what, what I think is is interesting about this, just in the way that we read comics slightly differently between us. Clearly, I'm not saying you know, one of us is right, one of us is wrong. Uh, the reason that I read their the, the the character panels more uh, before you know I, you know I think uh, example is I saw Pitt Rollins and you know her picture before I got to that panel is because it's not part of the map like you say there's a lot of dead space on this page of just oh this is just part of the map and you don't really need to be seeing that because their panels aren't that they stand out and they catch my eye more so my eye gravitates to that before I got to reading their name in the in the narration box yeah. Um... It is different when there's a splash page. Splash pages capture my eye first because they're supposed to. They're supposed to be a big visual moment. Yeah. Uh, this is different. This this layout in this page and all these text boxes, this is a montage. This is a montage with someone talking over it. And I, I always compare it to movies just because it's easy to kind of like correlate like how, how the feeling they're going for. And that's very much what this page is. Uh, you, you can see that the, the montage happening yeah. essentially in your head as you're reading through these narration boxes explaining who all these characters are uh so basically yeah so you've got the the guy on the, the left there whose name is like was it nahegan something like that yeah something like that. um he is the meth dealer so he's the one that catlin really wants to go after pitt rollins is the leader of the gun runners who supply guns to the meth guys uh for a price and then there's a dirty cop Colak, who basically turns a blind eye and offers protection to all the bad guys uh for a price so it's just kind of setting up all these things. And then the Catwoman makes a point of uh, stealing stuff. And she's really just stealing information, but she, she breaks into the meth guy's, like, sort of, like, uh, one, of, one of his locations. And uh, we actually cut to, like, the, the police at the scene of the crime afterwards, uh, which introduces the Hadley's still around. That's the detective that we, we met, really, properly last issue. But from, if you've been reading the whole yeah. book, this is a, a recurring character that I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah, who's not from Gotham. He's from, you know, wherever uh, Catwoman was <laughs> in the earlier parts of the run. Um, but he's here kind of to aid. Uh, and he gets a call from the FBI, tell him about the hitman that's in town, the Father Valley. But, you know, I, I liked how it told its story here where we see the aftermath and we kind of start to realize, wait, this is like one of these gang members that that uh, our gang leaders should say that 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 Catwoman wanted to hit, and then afterwards, you know, we have her meeting with us, this rival, well, not rival even, it's the you know, uh, pet, the the the, the gunrunner, and she's very different. And Catwoman sort of presents the idea that hey, I don't want meth on the streets. I'm going to do something that's a bit more nice, lower risk. You'll still be paid. Uh, I'm going to take the other guy out of uh, business. Uh, and it's all very kind of sketchy at first, but it, it sets up the idea that, like, she knows that this pet's going to just go and rat her out, and she's planning for that. So it's setting up, so we're, we're sort of getting the, the motions that she's got a plan. We, we don't know what it is exactly yet. You know, we're seeing the first steps of it. We're not really seeing where it's going, though. Uh, there's a very, again, I know it's a very stylized page. And uh, uh, the flashback to the break in. Yeah, where she explains the break in. So we actually get to see her sort of, like, fighting all these guys. Um, I thought this was a really interesting choice in that we have uh, Selena uh, superimposed across the top mm -hmm. with a couple of you know, particular standout moments and then just a lot of panels behind of all the, the minutiae of the action uh, that she is actively covering up in places, uh, the, the, the superimposed image on top. 
Uh, I thought it was a, an interesting choice. Really effective, though, because it makes it stand out. It really makes it pop, especially, that's where I'm going to praise some, you know, the red outline, uh, I think, really kind of draws your eye to her in the middle, right? Uh, as a, you know, it's, it's almost the antithesis to the uh, the drop shadow on the on the words on the, on the previous uh, two-page spread. Yeah, I, again, it's another really stylish two-page layout, which, again, gives you this idea of of a montage. It gives you the idea of her sort of telling the story as we, we get the big, bold sort of ideas of it. Um, you know, I, I especially like the two sort of wide panels at the top of the, the kid sort of causing the distraction by throwing in the uh, the smoke bomb or whatever it is he's throwing yeah. in the window. So I think it's like maybe a tear gas grenade. Um, but, you know, and then Catwoman coming in and then once it actually gets to her just fighting them, it's all just these very similar sized panels. Um, I really like that they're just just off like off kill they're a little bit on a slant just give it that sense of motion you know mm -hmm. everything's just leaning slightly to the right just just ever so slightly but just enough that it that you feel that forward momentum throughout everything I like the coloring uh, on the next page as well especially I like how the blue becomes more green as she's like strangling this big I guy I love the coloring throughout this um, the 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 stuff with Pitt Rollins in the, the the strip club, all the the like neon lighting you can feel, yeah. uh, great stuff. I mean, the colors go throughout. I, I think this flashback stands out because it's a just a bit more stylized than its choice of colors. Yeah. Um. But you know, it, it makes a point of showing you hardly like, scratch the car, which we saw previously with the cops. Like that's why they think there's like a bit an animal or something. Because that a was a a really nice transition that I liked. Uh, that you've just reminded me of, because uh, a lot of uh, yeah, you know, movies and stuff will do this where they'll they'll start a sentence and they'll cut to a different scene and the person will say a word that would have finished the the previous sentence but is also the start of theirs and um, the the word that would have finished it was claws uh, but it cuts to a guy named Klaus mm -hmm. uh, someone saying that I thought that was a really smart just enough that it works on a visual level but I don't think you can get away with on a verbal level um, so I thought that was a, a clever use of the medium. No, I'm just going to call him Claus. He's not getting called Klaus. <laughs> it's, it's, I just, I love it because it's the sort of trick you can only get away with in text where we see it, we understand what you're doing, and still, you know, in real time, convert it. But I think, if you just say that out loud, I think there's a second of disconnect that you have to think about it. So Selena leaves uh, this meeting with Pitt, and Pitt immediately, she starts, like, texting, you know, the other bad guy, and Selena's like, yeah, I'm counting on her doing that. Yeah, as she drives off with, uh, with her, her buddy who was interested at the start of the issue. Um, I think it's the next page. There's a, there's a page after this with just three vertical panels of uh, the, the, the meth like uh, boss, the meth, the meth mob boss is what I'm trying to say, uh, getting this call. And then the middle panel is uh, Hadley with you know the murdered board with the red strings where he's, he's got all the crime bosses and the assassin on the board. And then the third panel is just like Selena's apartment and kind of like just before she's arriving home. Or, and... I think this is the page where I sort of realized just how greatly constructed this issue was, where I got to this page with these three panels and it gave me all these things that were going on and none of it felt confusing, none of it felt like it was overstuffed. It set up so many moving parts to the story and I feel like it's really set up a world, like a really good first episode of a TV show would, where all of a sudden I understand this. So when it does this, I guess, again, if you want to use, I mean, I've used the word montage far too much in this this review, but if you want to again call us a montage of all these different things going on, this is this is your you know five minutes before the end of an episode of Dark montage, where everyone is before the end playing, playing the the slow song. Yes, um, and, and not really, but it, like it has that kind of thing where like, hey, I understand all these things. It set all this up, and you've only got twenty pages in a comic book these it's days to do that. Impressively dense, yeah. in, 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 and not in a bad way. Uh, dense in the sense of this this conveys so much different information in twenty odd pages. Right, this this issue. Yeah. There's so much going on, but no individual page feels like you're sat there reading it forever. It doesn't feel like it's overstuffed at any point, but there's just so much information that you learn by the end. Yeah, and the last few pages, Selena does arrive home, and uh, Shu is one of the kids, is watching Mad Max Fury Road with Selena's sister. Um, clearly, it's supposed to be Mad Max, and I guess Warner, Warner Brothers do own it, so I guess they're allowed to just do it without worrying about I it. Mean, there's no logos or anything, so they probably could have got away with it anyway. They probably could have done, but I, I think for safety, 
<laughs> so I'll pick a Mad a, a Warner Brothers movie that I like. I should say, not a Mad Max yeah. movie I like. And well, I mean, it's a good movie, so no one's going to complain. Uh, but you know, is is Selena with uh, her sister talking about how she's not even sure why she's doing what she's doing? She's you know, she said to someone else earlier that ah, you know, she's here to show that she's still got bait, that she's not gotten soft, that she's still a cat woman. And it's like she's kind of wondering if she's lying to herself because she kind of knows, yeah, maybe maybe it is just to show them rather than what she actually is. Yeah, uh, but she has this sweet moment with her sister, and then that's when we cut to the you know the the, the, the assassin with the night vision goggles across the street, um, and it, it's just a really nice moment because again it has this thing where the sinister part here is not that he's watching Selena. The sinister part is that now he knows someone she cares about because one of the the things that Penguin mentioned at the start is hey she's gone soft again bring that idea back in but she's gone soft she has people she cares about she has friends she has family maybe a lover. And this moment here is like, not only is he found someone she cares about, one of many, to be honest, that he could find potentially, but it's her sister who is in a wheelchair. So immediately it's like, okay, the most vulnerable person that Selena cares about is now on his radar. So that that's really what the cliffhanger is. And he's got a, is. He's got a smirk in his face as well, which makes it really sinister. It, it does. And it's it's again, it's not that they're in danger right now, but it's it's this intrusion on this, this personal private moment that, that Selena and, and, and Maggie are having here. Uh, you know, and, and like I say, you know, the, the, the implication of, okay, now he knows. Now now there's a threat going forward. Uh, he's, he's got this information. It's it's just wonderfully done. And there's also something really interesting in the art here where he's had these uh, these blue shades on the whole issue. And there's something about him lowering the night vision goggles and they've got perfect green circles on the goggles and then he's got perfect blue circles on his glasses. There's something about that visual that just makes it... I don't know, like... <laughs> there's not, it's almost like... Often in, like, stories, you'll, you'll have sunglasses or you'll have, like, something that covers up someone's eyes be kind of, like, a mask or the idea that you're covering up the evil part of who they are or something to make them less human. You know, I, I, an example I always go back to is that in Terminator 1, Arnold goes from not having sunglasses to having sunglasses, the idea that he's becoming less human as the movie goes on. But in Terminator 2, he starts off with the sunglasses and loses them because that movie's all about him becoming more human. Um, there's something here in that context about the goggles coming down, but he's still got another set of shades on that are equally, you know, dehumanizing. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it's a wonderful little touch. <laughs> no, it is. It's real good. Uh, so, Ram V is firing on all cylinders, and Catwoman is quickly moving to the top of the anticipated pile. Yeah, I think it's it's safe to say Ram V is, is one to watch going forward, right? Yep, um, I've only read two of his issues so far, but I have been impressed. Yeah, obviously me and Matt have been very much enjoying his uh, Justice League Dark. Obviously that's not Peter's thing, uh, especially given that it was mostly just following on from Tynan's threads that you know you dropped out of. Uh, but yeah, be- between that and now this as well, uh, it's it's uh, it's very promising. Mm. So uh, what are you giving it? Uh, 8.5 from me. I don't remember the name. I was very Ooh. impressed with this uh, by the time I got to the end, but I realized just how much it accomplished by the end and how I was into just all these threads moving into the next issue. I was like, you know what? There's a lot going on here and I'm excited for more. So uh, that is Catwoman issue 26. 